you may find yourself living in a teardrop trailer. And you may find yourself in another part of the world. And you may ask yourself, well, how did I so, get here? Um, when things fail, episode 17. I might have said the wrong number at the other one, um, but I wanted to keep rolling. Um, so I was, it was in 2020, middle of, uh, you know, the height of COVID. Um, it's just me and the guy living together. I had moved out into my own room. He was getting paid uh, to be my caretaker. I couldn't get a hold of the doctor's office to get all my um, re test results because they were uh, closed indefinitely uh, to UCSF to get in with the specialist. Um, I, I kept getting denied disability because they just looked at the one neurologist who was notoriously a prick <laughs> um, saying that I was faking it and um, the us not the guy and I not being together anymore at all and him realizing that I'm really serious about trying to move forward um, and get out of that situation because he was um, as much as he did take care of, of me and help me with like groceries and lifting things and stuff he was emotionally unstable it made me emotionally unstable and um, to the point of ab abusive um, you know everything was my fault his alcoholism his depression his um, you know not being happy or being able to be with a bunch of women or um, not making money on a roommate. Um, everything was basically my fault. And, um, you know, also him being a really bad alcoholic, every time I tried to you know, talk about something that I needed or like an upcoming thing. Um, I had to just keep over and over and over and over. And then it got to the point where like he would keep forgetting and then he would get mad at me and, and he would yell at me at night after being so drunk and then not remember any of it in the morning. And I was just living that like, tiptoeing, not able to talk, not able to go in any room, feeling uncomfortable, just feeling like kind of imprisoned because I couldn't do anything by myself. I couldn't walk far. I was having like really dissociative experiences where I would wake up, um, you know, in the bathroom on the floor with the shower running or um, I woke up in the park one night and I took an Uber back at like 4 a.m. I um, just really, really weird things were going on. Um, and so, you know, years of two, two and a half years of this progressive like getting worse and worse and worse although the medicine was helping um, I still needed help 
and I still didn't have anywhere else to go and I had no money coming in because I was kept getting denied disability. Um, so, uh, you know, and I kept getting hurt, you know, because we would plan like a, a fun night, like movies and popcorn and blah, 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 and dogs and go camping every weekend still and things. And um, then, you know, he would be on, um, on um, dating apps, like sexting and doing weird, like weird things and saying things to people he didn't know. Um, yeah, about me, about what, like about them, um, just very uh, out of character and hurtful and um, I guess not out of character, <laughs> but um, so uh, one night it was per particularly hard for me well, I was having a particularly hard time for a while, like month, like a few months, and um, I just couldn't come up with a plan. I had no plan. You know, I um, set up the GoFundMe. I did all these things, and while I like could not have survived without everyone's help, honestly, like. Because my parents, you know, they, I know they would do everything for me if they could, but they just can't. Um, my dad had actually lost his job a year before COVID. He couldn't find a job. And then he, you know, then that. And so they were struggling really bad um, with their own payments and having to like get rid of vehicles, change vehicles, and, um, refinance things, and just a really big lifestyle change for them. At the same time, when I'm going through all this, and, like, thousands of miles away, um, and I didn't really understand the gravity of it, um, so... You know, I'm really grateful for everyone's help in every way, from a shop, from donations, from everything. And I am so grateful for them, con continue, the continuing of them because <laughs> still struggling. But um, if you stay tuned, I have news. <laughs> we might have found it out. Um, but we're getting there um anyway you know just just not just just coming to the conclusion that I'm not getting better and that um I'm not going to be able to live by myself and support myself and do these things by myself like I've always been able to do you know there's something I've been struggling with for two years but had hope you know um and perseverance but that wasn't the case but it seemed it was um since I kept getting worse and so um one day I took um there were a couple other, another time that I had really a really bad incident, and I ended up in going to the emergency room. Um, it was actually like on my dad's birthday the year before, because I had a really bad freak out and seizure, and my doctor was like, "Go to the emergency room, have him give you an EEG, blah blah blah." And I went there, and I told them my doctor wants for an MRI. Um, as soon as you can because I just had one of my episodes and they want to see it in the ER doctor base he just like looked at me and he's like I'm too busy for this I have more important things to do here's an out of van go home <laughs> so I 
exciting. For my major episodes, I didn't end up going to the ER anymore because I was dismissed there also. Even though, you know, I'd be flailing on the ground and my pee and puking and just whatever. So anyway, that was life now and that wasn't um, in the plans. I had said to him, the guy, um, before I moved out there, before I was sick, just a few months before, it was like my biggest fear is not being physically well enough to do the things that I love, like dancing and hiking and cooking. And um, not but maybe two months later, I woke up like this. And I now know that it's for a reason. And that reason is for me to be brave enough to put my story out there and to help people. But in that dark moment, in those dark years, and living with that every day, I went into the, that, the closet and I took all the medicine that I could that was in there. He had a lot of leftover stuff from surgeries and whatever, and I was done. I just wanted to go to sleep and never wake up. And someone has other plans for me because it's the second time I've done this and woke up puking it up and woke up just like everywhere, all over my bed, all over the sheets, all over everything. And I like, I'm shaking and I'm sweating and I'm barely able to stand up when I walk in there and I tell them like, I need help, you know, I need help hope changing the sheets and things and he was playing video game and um kind of yelled at me like we'll wait I'm busy blah 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 and I'm like cool so I just sat there next to my vomited up pieces of pills just like Fuck. <laughs> I can't quit. You know, no one cares. No one cares that I just did this. Like, it was a, it's a burden to help me change my sheets. You know? <laughs> and, um, that's what I was. That's what I felt like for years. But, like I said, someone had other plans for me. So, here I am, and I'm telling my story, and I am able to do it. <laughs> and I'll tell you how in the next episode. <laughs> when the days go by, let the water hold me down. When the days go by, Into the blue again after the money's gone. Once in a lifetime, water flowing underground.